Welcome to A Slice of Therapy. This podcast was created with Anchor. And if you've not heard of Anchor, let me explain. It's free. It's a really easy way to make a podcast. And it helps me because I can just do this every day directly into my phone. Because there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. So if you fancy making a podcast too, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. In this episode, I want to talk to you about two very, very similar stories. They've got nothing to do with the world of therapy at all, actually. They have got something to do with the world of music, both of them. And the reason why I want to talk about them here is because I think... What they show us is when we have negative opinions about ourselves, you know, we think, oh, I'm no good at that. Or, you know, that thing I did isn't very good. Or whatever kind of negative view. And we all have these kind of little bits of self-talk, don't we, where we've got things that we kind of judge ourselves negatively for that maybe those negative judgments about ourselves aren't that accurate. Like, what if... What if we're the least likely people to be able to be accurate when judging ourselves negatively? And I ask that question because the stories that I'm going to tell you are very, very similar and... They have in common this idea that the musicians involved had judged something that they created as really negative. They thought it wasn't very good. And yet, in both cases, they were really wrong. Now, the first thing, the first story I'm going to tell you is about Blondie. And this was the band that Debbie Harry fronted. And when they were starting off, they they were with this producer. And the producer said, just play me everything that you've got. And so they did. They played all the songs that they were playing in whenever they were gigging. And they went through the lot of them. And the producer asked a really smart question. And he said, is there anything else? You know, maybe something you've kind of discarded. Is there anything else that you've... That you've, that you've got. And they said, well, not really. We've got this thing, you know. And it was this song that they'd created, but they, they thought it was no good. You know, they had a negative judgment on this thing. They said, not really. We've got this thing. And the producer said, well, okay, just play it for me anyway. So they did. And that song was Heart of Glass, which was a absolute massive hit. Now, had it been up to them judging themselves and judging their own creations and judging their own abilities, well, they didn't think that was very good. And so they ditched that completely. And yet that was the song that kind of broke them, I suppose. It was a massive, massive hit for them. And the only reason that anyone's ever heard it is because that producer kind of teased it out of them. Have you got anything else? Play it for me anyway. And it turned out to be Heart of Glass. And I often think about that story. And you might consider that this is a a one-off. But I was listening the other day to um, an interview with a guy named Max Martin. Now, you might not have heard of him. I don't know. He's a Swedish songwriter and producer. And he's actually... Apart from Lennon and McCartney, he's got most number ones of anybody. And he's catching them up. He's catching John Lennon up really quickly. Anyway, he's describing this song, he said, when he was trying to break through. He said he had this demo of a song. He said it was terrible. I mean, it was it was shockingly bad. It was awful. Anyway, he has this meeting with, um, with this uh, guy from a record label. And 
the guy from the record label basically, you know, says, okay, you know, play everything you've got. So he he presses play on the on the CD player or whatever and plays all the stuff. And the guy sits there and listens to each of these songs and at the end of it, he said, have you, have you got anything else? Same question, funnily enough. Is there anything else that you've got? And he said, well, not really. <laughs> he said, I've got this. Anyway, he plays them this awful demo as he saw it. And of course, the guy from the record label says, that's the one. That is the song. And that song went on to be a massive hit as well. It was the song I Wanted That Way by the Backstreet Boys. And it's just interesting, isn't it, that in both of these occasions, these people who were experts in the very thing that they did, you know, that was their thing, creating music, writing songs, musicianship. When they'd created it themselves, they missed the fact that they had a hit on their hands. Their judgment of themselves was so negative that they missed the fact in each occasion that they had a huge hit on their hands. And had it been left to their own judgment of themselves, their lives would have been very, very different. And so it gets me to think, really, if someone who is an expert in the very thing that they do can't spot that the thing that they've created is actually not rubbish, but is actually fantastic. How often do we do that generally with ourselves? How often are we missing the greatness in us? Simply because, given that we are us, we're actually in the worst place in order to spot it. What if some of the things that we think, oh no, that's not a very good aspect of us is actually a huge part of our greatness. And so I thought I'd share those stories with you because if they were wrong about Heart of Glass and if they were wrong about I want it that way, well, maybe we're wrong as well when we have negative self-talk about any other aspect of us. And so I wanted to share that just to kind of Give a different frame on it. That whenever the negative self-talk comes along, perhaps you can remember the song Heart of Glass or the song I Want It That Way and think, actually, you know, maybe this negative self-talk isn't quite as reliable as I think it is. So if you find this idea helpful, please do share it along so someone else can get the benefits as well. You can work with me direct. I'm Alan Parry. You can find me at liverpoolpsychotherapy.co.uk. You can subscribe to the podcast for free wherever you get them. And you can watch them as videos at sliceoftherapy.com. So thanks for listening. I'll be back tomorrow with another one.